Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another large block destroyer that has so many subgrids on this that, well I think I'm just going to grab on my character before I even show you what the ship looks like from the outside, get into the cockpit, and just going to fire out all the weapons at once at these poor little space pirates that are sitting right next to me. So moving the camera away, this is what it looks like. We have rows after rows of missile launches on the top there. They are not the traditional missile launchers, these are actual custom missiles that will fire out of their tube and go towards your enemies. You have options of firing them one by one, or you can fire them all at the same time as a emergency last ditch effort to destroy your enemies. We also have some point defense cannons in the form of auto cannons, we've got two of them strapped together in a traditional turret setup with a camera on the front of them, so we do have a bit of protection from any kind of small ships or small drones trying to sneak up on you, especially once you've exhausted all the missiles on this. Yes, without further ado, what I'm going to do now is bring up the HUD. I'm now going to come into first person view, look all the way down to make sure everything is right. Yes, it is. And now I'm going to come back into this and press number two. So pressing this, we're now going to launch out a missile and away it goes. That's not going to fly over to the poor little space pirate sitting in the distance. So just flying all the way over here and waiting for the impending destruction. And there we are. That was a lovely shot. Now turning back to the ship, actually getting a bit closer wherever it's gone. Don't know how I lost the ship. I'm now going to press number five. This is our emergency missile system, but what's going to happen is all the missiles are going to launch at the same time. There they are, small little lag spike, and off they all go. So now we're going to follow these along, all the way along to the space pirates. And there we are. That little base did not stand a chance. And that's all the missiles used on this ship. And there we are, that's all this ship does. So now what I'm going to do is the proper little thing that I usually do in these videos is go around the outside and whatnot. But I thought some people would appreciate just seeing how the missiles fire and what it's like, just straight off the bat. So anyway, this thing is called the Meldrop Missile Destroyer, which is the very fitting name because it will destroy anything from a very long range due to the fact custom missiles seem to have about a 2km range compared to the 800 standard weapons have. So pressing F10 and find this in the spawn menu, the Meldron Missile Destroyer, there it is, is a whopping 7869 large blocks. Using one hell of a lot of DLC packs, we've got a giant wall of text right here. And it does say it does not handle well due to the fact it's covered in subgrid. And I can confirm that after playing around with it, it is not the greatest thing to drive around. And it does jitter quite a lot. So we're going to give this thing a thumbs up. We're going to move around towards the very front. We'll have a quick look around the outside. A quick look at the interior because it does have a full flesh interior despite being very odd. And you can sort of see the ship is moving by itself. Not too much I could do about that unless I change it to a station. I'd rather not do that because it might spontaneously explode. Anyway, for the front of the Meldron Metal Destroyer, this is what we get. We've got a bunch of white steel blocks with an upside down door right in the middle. Behind that doorway is a hydrogen thruster to slow this thing down. And it's one of the only hydrogen thrusters to help slow this thing down. So if you're charging around at high speeds, it will not stop in a reasonable amount of time. Move around on the side that has the sunlight, here we go, we can see a bunch of lovely black and brown steel blocks go all the way along this, with a brown along the top, black along the bottom, and a couple of hydrogen thrusters for our left and right. We then clearly see all of our missile tubes, we've got three sets along the top, and one set along the bottom. Then we've got three custom autocannon turrets, with a flare launcher on both sides, just role play, of actually using a proper flare, but it does not work in Space Engineers, which is kind of a shame really. Anyway, over here we've got ourselves a singular jump drive, so we can jump 2,000 kilometers if you wanted to do that. I would not risk doing that on this ship due to the fact it, well, it does not seem to keep still by itself, so you never know what's going to happen when you jump. Yes, up to there is a doorway, we've got one on both sides to get inside. Then we've got stairs to go all the way down into this section right here behind the turret, which is where your living quarters, your toilets, and whatnot are all sitting. Moving along towards the very back there, we can see some great our railings going all the way along the top below our missile tubes. There's some more hydrogen thrusters for our left and right. There's some fantastic use of a conveyor cap sitting on the end of that hydrogen thruster. Then right down there we've got another hydrogen thruster to move us up while in space. Ran towards the back and putting my light on. We've got two large hydrogen thrusters to boost us around with a connector right in the middle to help recharge up those hydrogen tanks. If we move all the way up and look down, we can see some sneaky hydrogen thrusters sitting right there. There they are, right from the very top. Here's our missile tubes where we launched out all of our missiles. So we've got armored panels going all the way around with a white rim around the top. That's simply what they look like with a merge block in the middle to connect them up to. There is no way to repair these up, so once you fire them, you will have to spawn in a brand new one, unless you put a projector on this and rebuild them that way. <laughs> As you can clearly see the ship moving around here, and it's going on a little venture by itself. Anyway, come back to the top there, turning off my light. There we are, we've got a red light on one side, green light on the opposite. There's a column with an interior pillar with a white light on top. 
Moving along the middle there, more missile tubes. I do like how they crisscross together. Make sure they fire off on both sides. Then over to this part, we then got a little radar thing, which is basically how we're going to laser designate our missiles. So if we do not want to lock onto our target, or if we cannot lock onto our target manually, we can use this to guide the missiles using the camera and a very fancy projector setup so we can precisely move it around, make it maneuver, and eventually get to its target. Come around over to there, there's our little top mounted camera, there's a little light, there's our proper camera, then down to there is a suspension, and that is getting quite fast now moving around. It's going to eventually move over to the space pirate and engage with its cannons on the side. We'll come back to this bit later where we can actually see what's going on with it. Looking all the way down, coming towards the front, more missile tubes. Then moving all the way down, I need this thing, here we go, putting my light on once again. There's the bottom of our jump drives, there's another column with interior pillar and light on the end of it. Then towards the back there, there's our bottom missile tubes, another column with some interior pillars, more hydrogen and thrusters, and there we are with the outside. So now what I'm going to do is just grab all my carriage, just get out of the seat there, bring them back around so we can actually fly through the doors properly, and we'll go through the full on interior. So coming all the way down here, dropping myself down, closing the door behind me, here we are. So right in front of me, this is our seat to actually control this thing, and when we get inside, it's going to automatically lift up, so you can see it out of that window right up there. For a small demonstration, we can hit that button, that's simply what's going to happen. The button is there in case you get out of the seat and it does not move down, so we always have an emergency way of getting all the way down to the bottom, so we can then hop inside with ease. Turning around, we're going to see our ladder that goes all the way down to our proper living quarters, just coming down slightly to make sure I don't miss the floor. Here we are, here's our proper living quarters, we've got beds on both sides. Make sure you're not a rough sleeper, but you could actually fall out and fall down the stairs. Yes, into there, there's a kitchen block, there's a little seat to sit on, and an inset light block to make sure you've got plenty of light to see what you're doing. Moving down slightly more, here we go. This is going to be your little toilet where you're not going to get much privacy. Yes, that's all there is on this floor. Then all the way down to the bottom, this is kind of your more important floor, which is making the whole ship function correctly. So there's our custom weapon controllers, but we do not need to touch them. Onto our left and right hand side facing ladder, we then got our programmable blocks. Once again, we do not need to touch them, but they are for our custom radar thing at the top there, as a custom turret. And of course, our script to make sure the missiles can go and find their targets. But as for that, that's that for the interior. It's very short, very sweet. Now I've got to come all the way up to the top here, get into the seats, and here we are. We now raised all the way up. We can just about see out of the windows where all of our lovely missile troops are sitting. Looking all the way up, can't really see too much. Looking all the way down, got a very important LCD screen to tell us what's going on. Now to bring up the HUD, then you've got number two, number three, number four, and ultimately number five to control this thing. Number three, number four is going to be to move this around so we can actually see what's going on. The beam right is for the antenna on top, the fake radar dish thingy I talked about as we were looking down at this thing. So as I hit that, coming into number one, we now got a very, very jittery camera. We also the left mouse button, we're now going to get a big old projector projecting a line, and your missiles, when you launch them, will now follow where this is going. So see those space pirates in the distance? We were aiming for that right there. But if I want them to say hit the little platform around the corner, I can then guide them around like so, and eventually lead them all the way around, then hit into that platform, they'll go and hit in directly where the reticle is sitting. Which is a very handy thing to have if you can't lock onto a target, or if you can't see if it's an enemy or not, and you just want to pump some missiles into them. Anyway, hopping out of that, looking all the way down once again, moving backwards, there we are, we now go into our camera control, which then look for any kind of enemies in the vicinity, so as soon as they flash their signals, or if you can lock onto it manually, or then say locked on, then you press number two to launch missiles one by one. Of course, we can't do that because we've launched all of our missiles, so let's skip over to number five. Number five is going to be launch all your missiles at once, which is what we saw at the very start of the video. We simply hit that, and they'll all launch together. If you are not locked onto something, or if you're using laser pointer, you want to be very careful with this control, because it's very easy for all the missiles to hit into each other and blow up, wasting a bunch of missiles that could be the one needed to actually blow up your enemies. Then finally, number six, that's going to be fuel flare launchers on the side there, so we can hit them. And there we are, they just simply pop out and make it very pretty sight for your enemies. Over to tab number two, we then got our hydrogen thrusters, turn them on and off if you want to do that. Number two is then for your hydrogen tanks to stockpile on and off. Number three is for your connector at the back of the ship. Number four is then for your battery to auto recharge. Then number five is for your O2 HU generators to turn them on and off. Over to tab number three, we then got our jump times. As you can see, we can jump 2,000 kilometers, which is bloody good stuff, but I'm not going to do that because I have some very good space pirates sitting here for some demonstrations in just a minute. Over to tab number four, we've got nothing else. Checking the very end here, just in case there are some sticky controls. No, there are not. So what I'm going to do is now is move this thing forward very carefully. Here we go. So we're going to move forwards. And this is what we get when slowing down. So this is incredibly slow. And we do need to be very careful. We're not really going to be able to do a 180 either. Do the fact that around quite a lot. So moving this thing around. Here we go. 
is very, very odd. This thing is not very happy, but it does seem to behave a lot better now the missiles are all out of it. And while well, we should be able to do 180 properly, like you saw there, to stop ourselves a lot quicker. But if I was to get out of this and they spawn in a brand new one, so out we come here, just go and drop down another one right next to it. So we're just going to spawn that in. There we are. Going to get rid of that. Now we're just going to wait for that to pop in and hop inside. So now we're going to move forwards once again. Now we're going to come down to a stop, do a 180. And as you can see there, it's not too happy with me turning this thing around. It likes to pull up, it likes to pull down. And as you saw throughout this whole video, it does not sit still. Yes, for our left and right. There we go, can't really see that because of the planet. Yeah, we are once again not too fast with that. Moving down, very, very slow. Moving up is a little bit better than moving down. So we should be able to fly this on a planet or moon with low gravity. And that's up to you if you want to take that down there. But as for that, that's pretty much it for all this thing has to offer. So what I'm going to do now is lock onto this once again. Then we're going to drive all the way up to it and let the order cannons do their thing. So here we go, we're now locked onto that. First person view, all the way down. In fact, we're not locked onto it just yet. That's a bit preemptive, but there we are, we're now locked on. And hopefully, hopefully they'll update, maybe not. But you know what, I'm going to come over to the beam ride. We'll go and test this out. So into this, over there, looking all the way down, there are the space pirates. It's a bit jittery, but here we go, pressing number two. There goes one of our missiles, and hopefully that's going to follow the beam. And anytime now, there it is. So if I wanted to move it over there, there we are. It's going to move all the way around this asteroid. And it's eventually going to get too far away from the space pirates and probably hit into the back of that asteroid. Yes, it will. But yes, that's all the beam ride does. I think what I'm going to do now is just launch all the missiles straight into it. And away they go. There we are, a little bit of a lag spike. And now, zooming away there, there goes all the missiles. And there they are. They're now just blowing up into each other, which is kind of unfortunate. But most of them did go into the space pirates. And there we are. That's some nice big explosions. And looked like it did hit a hydrogen tank of some sort due to how big that explosion actually was. But yes, coming out of that, flying all the way up to it, we might actually crash into the asteroid by accident. I want to show off how these custom turrets work on the outside. There they are, they have now engaged, hiding in the HUD there. They're simply going to tear them apart and do one hell of a lot of damage. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of a drive-by due to the fact I can't actually slow this thing down in time. But it looks like I have completely disabled that space pirate wreckage or little outpost base, can't remember what that was, in a very short amount of time. Those guns are absolutely lethal. So I think to finish off this video, so I'm going to reverse this thing all the way up and slam it straight into that asteroid. So here we go, we are now charging along towards the asteroid to destroy this ship. Well, well the end of the video crash, here we go, all the way forwards. Our guns have engaged with something, but that's not going to matter. There we go, that's one hell of a lot of destruction. Oh well, that was actually one hell of a lot of particle effects just flying out of there. That would have been all the subgrids. But look at that, we just revealed the space pirate base inside the asteroid. And there is one of their large hydrogen tanks. They've got an LCD screen, a hydrogen engine. And well, that's one way to reveal the base, and one way to actually get inside. There we are, that's the doorway to actually go inside this. Which is a very novel little thing. But yes, as for the ship itself, it's an absolutely fantastic missile boat if you want to actually use one in your world. Very good for long distance sniping. If you want to say take out a very big corvette or a very big battleship, it maybe spawns as part of the modular system encounters mod that you're not too sure if you can actually engage properly with your actual fighter ship. It might get torn to shred very quickly, so using this to snipe it from long range will be a very good idea. But yes, that is that for the Melderon Missile Destroyer. It's a fantastic little fighter to use in your world. There'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around yourself. Highly recommend you do, as well as a link to the Skybox I'm also using. I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.